Hey everybody. So, uh, apparently it's been five months since I last did a video, and that's mainly because life gets in the way of stuff. Um, with the work that I do, I often find myself stuck in projects for months and months at a time, and that on top of university work uh, tends to bog me down a bit. But anyway, so the plan is, is instead of my last videos, which tended to be half an hour long or so, is to cut them down to the average of 15 minutes. That's just user retention, really, when it comes down to it. So what we'll do for these Let's Plays uh, is we'll pretty much just skip all of the management stuff. So I will buy all the weapons, sell stuff, what have you. Um off camera, for lack of a better term, and do all of the playing in on, well, on camera, obviously. So, without further ado, I will just cut straight in. So we've got three missions. Um, we've got Horrors of Mortime, um, Pillagers, and The Haunters in Darkness. Average very poor. Very poor, very poor, or average very poor. And so really just going to be between these two. Uh, we might as well send some scouts out as well. It's only five gold. And that is poor, very poor. So that's not helpful. So both of these are pretty much exactly the same for reward. It really comes down to the mission type. I don't really want to have both warband scattered. Uh, and the other is in three strike teams, where the other is scattered, so I've got a 50-50 chance of being in a decent position, I guess. So, we might as well go with this one. Not much has changed since last time for the Warband itself, but having been out... For, ha having not done a video for so long, uh, so there's lots more DLC that's come out, and there are now Vampire Counts and Witch Hunters that are also in game which I uh, bought the DLC for so we might come across them if we're lucky other than that we will launch and deploy A hideous manifestation okay so I came off on the bad side of this funnily enough and so we are gonna end up scattered while the other group are in three groups now that might not be so bad because what may actually happen is that we may all be stuck in one building So, we are scattered. We're pretty alright, actually. Uh, we are against Chaos, by the looks of it. So, they're going to be slow moving, and we're not. And the highest group of Wordstone seems to be over where my one of my gutter runners is. Verminkin, even. So, we will try to regroup on him. And we'll see if we can see off the Chaos. Uh, so, we're going to go straight up the door here. And we'll go, I can't go up there, so we'll come back and we will jump up here, narrowly missing that trap, which I didn't see. Uh, that will do for him. So we'll end the turn there. You might wonder why I didn't do Ambush Stance. Uh, Ambush Stance doesn't give us any chance to dodge, so if we see somebody who, is, who would normally fall within the Ambush Stance, then we may not necessarily want to charge him blindly. He may not have the movement to actually engage us, so it might be, make be more beneficial just to hang back and not get involved. Uh, this guy is here, so we will run him down here, I guess. The one thing I like about Skaven is that they are very, very maneuverable, and they can dodge, jump, run, without being pinned down so much, or fall and hurt themselves, although invariably I always end up falling and hurting myself. So we'll quickly run out, grab some wardstone before the enemy gets here. Uh, I can already see one of them's on the map. So we have to be a bit careful of that. Okay. Hopefully I can move him away from the wardstone so I can capitalize on that further with another character. My war boss is, uh, warlord's there. So we'll put him in a dodge stance there. And then... We're going to have to jump him down. And go left. And I 
think I'll be able to jump that next turn. I'm going. No, I'm not going the wrong way. Uh, I think since he's going to have a bit more movement. Oh, now I'm going. Well, sort of going the wrong way. Okay. Ooh, there's a cluster there. We want that. There we go. Objectives updated. We're not too far away from actually being able to hand in uh, our first shipment request, which will be benefit us with some heavy amount, with a decent amount of gold. Although, unfortunately, the mandated ones don't actually give us all that much in the way of like reward compared to if we do it voluntarily to other factions and it is usually just keeping a balance while trying to achieve some form of objective like getting a, a different character or getting quick cheaper training or what have you oh, that was a nice glitch and yeah, it's gone uh where are we we are miles away all right I, I've lost him. Oh, right, yeah, we are literally miles away. So... We made it. Make sure I'm running the right way. If there's one thing I don't want with Skaven is I don't want to get uh, pinned down. And now we wait. See what the rest of the Chaos team do. So we have a cultist coming up. <coughs> Now he's near my uh, near my boss. Mm -hmm. Nice thing about the uh, Marauders, I think they are. <coughs> Excuse me. The nice thing about the Marauders is they move very, very slowly, and even the slowest Skaven should be able to outrun them. miles away from me at the moment. So we'll move up. So far I think I've only come across the Witch Hunters as an enemy team since I started playing this again. Uh, although I've done nothing with this warband since the last time I recorded. So I have seen it with uh, the other other groups. I've also played a bit with the Vampire Counts, and um, well, I think, I'm not sure if they're called Vampire Counts, but you know what I mean. They are actually really quite fun. Um, I'm only disappointed somewhat that they don't have skeletons, which is true to Mordheim, the, uh, the actual tabletop game. Right, okay, so they're all there. And there's one on his own, so... Can I backtrack? Yeah, I'm going to backtrack a bit. I think I'm going to just drop down here. So the one on their own is right behind me, actually. Oh, I've been lucky. That usually, I usually end up getting the, the, uh, the, the curses and end up not being able to do anything. So we'll finish tidying up the Warstone Clusters, uh, sorry, Shards, I, oh, never mind. I don't tend to bother with the Clusters, the smallest amount, unless I absolutely have to. I think we're going to hang him back because I don't want, I want to be able to give my uh, tankier Skaven some time to move, because although they can take a bit more of a hit, the downside is, is they're actually quite unmaneuverable. And I just don't want him to get caught on his own and ganged up on. Otherwise, he's fucked, basically. AI yeah, is thinking. Still thinking. Okay. Okay, so he's now full. Oh, I picked up a fragment at some point. I keep getting... No, I didn't mean cluster. Fragment. 
I don't usually bother with the fragments. Clusters are the big ones. So we're going to go right here and find our lone chaos guy, and hopefully we can charge him. There we go. Typical. So I'm going to go straight into dodge stats, but at least he will hopefully be locked down. And my Skaven boss should make quick work of him. When it comes to the actual tabletop, because I, I, I play uh, Warhammer Fantasy on the tabletop as well, is I play uh, Undead, well, Vampire Counts. And I haven't come across a Skaven player yet, although it's usually just me and a close friend of mine who play, he plays Orcs, and at the moment we're, uh, I think we're tied. Uh, three for three, which I've, I've been getting used to the game, because uh, I didn't uh, play Warhammer at all when it was actually out and only picked it up after Age of Sigmar came out and I do kind of regret not picking up the game at a when it was actually published or being published oh it's my turn because I never got the chance to play in Games Workshop I never got a chance to take part in tournaments and that was just due to when I first got into the hobby I was I was 15 years old and I went straight into playing uh, Space Marines with Warhammer 40,000. And while I still play 40k today, or at least up until recently when I've taken a bit of a break from it, oops, is uh, I played Imperial Guard. And I've now started collecting Space Marines again um, as a custom chapter. A successor for those for those of you who play 40k or know the lore, they will be a successor chapter of the Iron Hands, who have foregone uh, unnecessary bionics. So they'll still have bionics, but they just won't, you know, trade in their hands at every possible moment for something new and shiny. Um, it, it's because I think it's, the reason I went for it is. Uh, I quite like the Iron Hands from the 30k setting, and I'm not made of money, and I can't afford to pick up uh, the entire Iron Hands Legion. And towards the end, uh, Ferris Manus, the Primarch of the Iron Hands, ended up kind of feeling that his Legion, the Iron Hands, were going too much the wrong way, and with their the flesh is weak feeling. So... Yeah, in the end, uh, in the end, I kind of went for that sort of theme. But other than that, yeah. So I play a whole bunch of war games. In fact, I will be setting up a war games related channel at some point. Uh, and okay, and I will put him in amber stance actually. Put him in here. And I think what I want to cover with that isn't so much war games itself and doing battle reports. I don't have the space. For that, I mean, I don't. I also don't think the club, the local club that I have, would be very appreciative, to be quite honest, of having a group of people trying to record a battle report. There's just too many people in a relatively small place. But I will want to do things like uh, I really want, don't want to say unboxing videos, but unboxing videos, because you buy a lot of miniatures, especially sites which are from independent retailers. Their sites are fairly low quality, I guess is the best way of putting it. They are the sort of uh, very old style of displaying their wear and a very old style of website. Aren't they very difficult to navigate? In fact, I, I, I bemoan the wargaming market quite a lot because... Compared to the video game market, which is all about getting the product to the client as quickly as possible these days, the wargaming market still seems to be like 1990s era internet. Not entirely sure what on earth they're doing there, but they feel that they have to take on the internet and be online if they're going to compete in the modern market. But then they just fail to. So one of the things that I want to do in light of that is I want to actually buy models that interest me and work out whether or not they're actually the quality that they look like and what they're like to paint, how they assemble if they're plastic, what sort of size they are, how they compare to other ranges. 
Um, if that interests you, then let me know in the comments. And uh oh, where's that then? Okay. Ow. And I'll start to do these sorts of things. Um, I will probably not do that much in the way of Games Workshop, but uh, because they are well known, people know what the quality of their models are like, and it's not news. And it would also be nice to actually give some, uh, give a platform for models which are, or companies which are less out there, like the companies which are not as well known. Um, Empress Miniatures, for example, they do a wonderful line of historical figures. The Perry Brothers, who made a lot of the original uh, Games Workshop miniatures, or Citadel miniatures, back in the day, they're still going. They still have miniatures that are of high quality. And there are lots of other companies that are broadly across the spectrum, some more expensive than Games Workshop, some a lot less. I would say that, in my general experience, I would say that Games Workshop models are by far the better quality models in, than your average historical set. And I think this simply comes down to Games Workshop knowing their market and uh, the fact that they, frankly, have more money to buy better molds and buy and to hire uh, more, for the lack of a better term, more more. That's what I'm looking for. More experienced and better talented uh, sculptors. But anyway, this is uh, a let's play of more time, not me to ramble on about miniatures. Well, that's one of them finally down. So hopefully I can get him across. I'm not sure I'll be able to charge, but I want to try and support. I don't know. There we go. So if we can get rid of their boss quite quickly, we can hopefully push them off the off the table, <laughs> out of the game, um, fairly quickly. I do want to do more videos. Um, it just comes down to time and energy, really. I kind of I wouldn't say I forgot about. It. Well, no, I, I hadn't forgotten that I'd done it, but I sort of the initial thing went through, and not many people viewed it. So I kind of went, well, okay, fair enough, you know. And then I left it for a couple of months, and I came back, and there were uh, a there's now been a good couple of hundred views, and the retention was isn't great, and I appreciate that my presentation style is still very much in works, and being able to talk clearly and for a certain amount of time without, whoops, without breaking and uh, into large blocks of silence is quite challenging. Um, especially when you're playing a turn-based game, and actually, I consider that more time is maybe not the best game for this, because I have to wait for the AI to do something, and that could mean that the AI is off the off the. Hang on. Oh, off screen, and not seeing anything. So you have this period where the the, computer, the screen isn't doing anything, and it's just me talking, and it's actually quite hard to talk to that. Especially when there's nothing changing that I can say, oh, look, something's happening. So it might be that more time may not continue, or I might have find a way of presenting more time differently, in that I'm only talking through the parts where there's something happening on screen, and as soon as I think that there's something not happening, I will cut it out and just not talk, and then edit, take it out in editing. And hopefully I can put that together without it being too bloody obvious. But, you know. Uh, this is very much me learning how to do YouTube. So. Which is why I've not put ads on yet. Or started a Patreon. I mean, don't get me wrong. I appreciate it would be completely jumping the gun if I did Patreon at this point. But. I don't know. I, I, I don't feel like. I should be making money while I'm still in the early stages of learning what I'm doing. So I'm just going to see if I can chase down his boss. Uh, I'll take a chance. And hopefully, no, hopefully put him out of action. If I can get him to uh, flee again, that would be quite nice. Because then hopefully I'll get a free swing. But if I can just pile on him and then hopefully kill him quite quickly, I might be able to force their morale below threshold. There we go, let's see what happens. They are below threshold, so they now have to take a check. 
That's my turn again, still. Uh, right. Do they have an unengaged guy nearby? Sort of. Um, but nothing I can do about it. Oops. I'm not even sure I'm going to climb this. Nah. Good old Skaven climbing. So, I will end my turn here so I don't end up having... Hopefully, I can avoid an injury roll on him. And they failed. So, that is the end of the game. So, with that, I'm going to leave it here. Uh, I'll do the admin... Actually, I won't leave it here. I will we'll go through and see what happens to my guys. And then all the admin stuff, I will do off camera. Okay. Uh, no injury. That's good. Because you can get injured even if your guy doesn't go down, which can be quite frustrating because they complete a mission on low health. You think, oh, well, that's me good, and then they can end up, like, being out the next game. Okay, so everybody survived, and I've got some experience. I can now pay off my murder lord, and... Then we, I'll do all this admin, and then I'll come back later and we'll do another video. So, thank you very much for watching. Um, see you next time.